Hello everyone. The weather here in Bangalore is pretty cool and it's uh, it's time to speak about AVR interrupts. In the in the previous few videos we have seen uh, how the timers work and uh, you know you've done a couple of examples on them. Now you could have observed one thing. So, you know, we turn on the timer, we wait for the timer overflow flag to go high and then we do some action you know uh, we in the sense the microcontroller so we are waiting for a thing to happen okay and that is not always good because uh, if the processor has to you know interface with a few more devices then uh, monitoring each of them every now and then or you know all the while becomes a tedious task and that is why we have interrupts and in the first method wherein the controller goes to everyone and checks uh, do you have any work uh, it says yes or no so doing that you know the where the controller goes and asks everyone around it's called the polling and uh, the way in which uh, you know uh, the device is saying or the internal it, it could be internal devices uh, on the microcontroller like the timers the uh, and all of that or even external devices if they are asking the controller uh, like I need your help can you help me so this is interrupting the controller so this comes in handy so that you know the controller can do its own task and whenever any external device uh, needs any request it will it will just ask for it and uh, those are your AVR interrupts now in AVR so uh, these are the interrupts basically now before you go ahead and speak about uh, you know the uh, uh, the actual interrupts that we get in AVR there's also one more thing like let's say if more than two devices ask for a request like uh, hey CPU we want uh, your attention so what does the CPU do in that case so in that case the CPU looks at its priority so there's something also called as interrupt priority now so what are the sources of interrupts uh, for an AVR okay so we have worked with timers and timers surely make a case for them to have interrupts so timers do have interrupts and all of the three timers for 80 mega 32 have interrupts okay so we have timers and interrupts and then also there are external pins there are three external pins that 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 generate an external interrupt so uh, which of these three pins we'll see later when we are dealing with external interrupts and uh, the other devices or you know there are communication protocols which we have not discussed still like the UART so this is asynchronous serial communication so we will speak in depth about all of these so UART generates interrupt uh, the SPI this is one more protocol so this is asynchronous uh, uh, protocol which is called serial peripheral interface and this is also used to flash the controller in most of the uh, cases so this is one protocol and this protocol also uh, you know is used to uh, uh, you know communicate with other devices like the memories and the ADCs and whole lot of stuff so we'll these also uh, create interrupts to the controller uh, the next uh, sort of devices that create interrupt and again all these are internal so uh, is the in ADC and lock to digital converter so uh, this is in internal to the controller this is internal to the controller and these are external interrupts all right so this is pretty clear that uh, you know all these devices need interrupts because uh, the CPU can do its own computation and uh, you know all these devices can request CPU's attention okay now whenever any of these devices internal or external make a request to the cpu uh, the cpu what it does is uh, in the arrangement of interrupts is such that uh, you know uh, these are mapped on 
on the ROM. So in, in our first video, you have seen the structure of the ROM, which is uh, the flash memory in this case. So when the controller uh, resets, it starts with location zero and also reset is called an interrupt. So similarly, uh, you know, the, the locations, so whatever code we write, as you said earlier, it goes and resides into the flash. So, uh, so whenever an interrupt occurs, uh, you know, we need to go to a specific location in order to uh, perform whatever that interrupt uh, is generated for. And, you know, the table where uh, you know all these addresses are stored as to where uh, you know what should inv invoke that particular address or where should the execution start from these are listed in a table it's called the interrupt vector table so this will be clear in just a minute so now uh, the place where the actual code or you know the actual uh, routine is stored as to what should be done if a certain interrupt occurs. It's called the interrupt service routine. Okay. And now we'll go ahead and look at the interrupt vector table for the 80 mega 32. And as, as we have seen before, we should not have any surprises in there. It should have all the things that we have discussed. So this is the uh, interrupt vector table for the 80 mega 32. Now what you have first up is, this is the uh, program address or you know, this is the address of the flash memory and 000. zero, zero. So uh, we have discussed this before. So a reset is also called an interrupt. Okay, and this could occur due to an external pin, power on reset, power on reset is when we turn it on, uh, it's burn out when the voltage falls be below specified level, uh, it resets, then there is something called a watchdog, uh, you know, I will s speak about all of that, but all of those things, uh, you know, cause a reset. And when, when that reset occurs, pro program starts executing from the zeroth location. Now, the next bunch and we'll speak about them in a little while so next bunch is the external interrupts and as i said before there are three external interrupts on this particular microcontroller uh, if if you are looking at any other family uh, i mean any other processor from this family you could have more than three uh, if you look at 80 mega 128 or anything like that you could have more than that now the next set of interrupts belong to the timer so this is a fairly long list so all these interrupts belong to the timer and then again this is spi uh, uart so next three interrupts belong to uart then we have adc and then we have a, 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 the and the uh, interrupt for the EEPROM memory and then we have interrupt for the analog comparator so we also have a comparator on this particular chip then there is uh, there's one more protocol called the I TWI or I2C so we have an interrupt for uh, that as well and there is uh, so the controller also has you know mechanism to load or you know upload a code take it from a computer and upload it uh, to the chip and that is called the uh, you know flashing the controller and that for that also we have uh, interrupt here so these are all the interrupts for edmi 32 now let us go ahead and see how we can turn them on and how we could use it and since we'll be programming it in c it is pretty simple okay so uh, and you know since we have been talking about timers all the time and we know why they need interrupts we'll go ahead and you know uh, in the next video we'll do uh, interrupt on timers but before you go ahead and do that let's see what and how we could configure them in the uh, in c and for the 80 mega 32 so uh, what are the resistors involved for configuring the interrupts the first uh, resistor involved is this resistor so this is sreg or the status resistor now all the uh, things here these are the flags okay so these have nothing to do with interrupts so uh, the bit here which is of concern is the i bit okay so this is you know master control for the interrupt so whenever you want to use any of the interrupts this should be one so if we the default is zero if you want to use any of the interrupts this should be made one okay and since we are talking about timers i thought it would be 
uh, uh, better to you know have uh, have this discussed as well so this is timer interrupt mask resistor so this in you know this uh, particular resistor that you see here it enables the timer interrupt and this is what we'll be using in the next video now uh, before looking at these resistors uh, let us see uh, with a diagram how these works or how the interrupts are controlled now sreg is the master control for all the interrupts so if i put an and gate here okay so this is how we logically represent how interrupts work like uh, say for example this is an and gate and one input of this and gate is the sreg uh, resistor like say this input here is the sreg and since this output controls or enables or disables the interrupts so if this particular bit is zero then whatever I give here respective of what we have on this pin it will always be zero and interrupts will be disabled so this is like the master control now let us take an example of timer overflow interrupt okay so uh, let's say that uh, the timer this is this is one more and gate okay and so if you want to enable the timer interrupts we need to make this bit as one and assuming this is one we should get a one here now the two inputs possible inputs for this are the timer overflow bit which we have already discussed so if the timer runs over this bit sets one and we really need an interrupt for this as you have seen previously so uh, so there is a control to turn on this timer overflow interrupt and that control is your timer interrupt zero or timer overflow interrupt zero bit. So this bit is contained in the TI MSK resistor timer mask resistor which was showing you earlier. So let's just go ahead and look at that. So here we have, so this bit right here, it stands for timer overflow interrupt zero. So this is for timer zero and it's an overflow interrupt. And now as you could guess, the next interrupt is for, you know, the output compare. If the out, uh, OCR resistor matches with the TCNT resistor, then uh, interrupt generates and that is for timer zero. So we have an interrupt for that. Similarly, we have uh, in interrupt uh, overflow interrupt for the timer one and since there are two uh, compare resistors for timer one we have uh, you know interrupts for those two and this is an input capture resistor which are not spoken about and will not worry about it for now and this is for the timer uh, two so this is overflow interrupt and the compare interrupt so uh, you need not worry about remembering uh, the names or even the position of the interrupts uh, because uh, the, the compiler or the ID will do that for you. You just need to understand how it really works. So to, to just brush it up. So if we are writing in C, we need to take care of the following things. The first thing is we need to uh, make the S bit, uh, sorry, the I bit or the uh, in the SREG resistor. So this is what I'm speaking about. So this is the master control. So uh, this this particular bit here. So we need to make it one. So uh, in C, in order to do that, uh, you know, we should first include the interrupt file. And that is included with this. AVR slash interrupt dot h okay and as soon as you include that you get two ma macros which do a super simple job for us uh, in order to enable or disable interrupts and those instructions are sei and cli so this is set interrupts and clear interrupts now the sei what this instruction does internally is it sets the i bit in the sreg resistor and this clears the uh, SREG resistor, this I bit in the SREG resistor. And the third thing is we need to, uh, you know, we need to uh, turn on the 
actual interrupts like say for example we are using timers so we need to turn on the timer interrupts okay so this is master control so the first thing that we did was master control and this is individual control of the interrupts and after we do that we need to really go ahead and write the interrupt service routine so uh, the interrupt service routine as as we said earlier uh, this is what needs to be executed when a particular interrupt occurs so this is all about avr interrupts that i wanted to speak about in this video in the next video we'll go ahead and get the timer in we'll write the interrupt to the timers and we'll see how really it works and the best thing about it is we need not monitor it in the program in the main program the main program could do whatever it, it wants and whenever the timer overflows uh, you know we get an interrupt and we can do uh, you know whatever we wish to do with that so in the next video so as i'm saying it from the time video we'll be doing pretty cool we'll be doing the persistence of vision since we have a background of timers as well as uh, the interrupts now we'll go ahead and do that in the next video so do not forget to subscribe and stay tuned thank you for watching